1999 to 2012 was what many considered to be the golden ages of MMORPGs. EverQuest, Ultima, Dark Age of Camelot, Peak World of Warcraft, Lord of the Rings Online, Age of Conan, Aeon, Guild Wars 1, RuneScape, MapleStory, Lineage 2, and too many more to even list. What most of these MMOs during this time had in common though, was that they all used the tab targets in combat system, and by the time 2010 rolled around, there was certainly a sense in a portion of the gaming community that MMO combat had become stale, repetitive, and too scripted. In 2010, Vindictus released, and gave people a taste of what was to come for future MMO combat design. But Vindictus wasn't a real MMORPG, more of a heavily instanced, stage-based ARPG with multiplayer elements. People wanted a fully-fledged open-world MMO with world bosses, dungeons, raids, PvP, and large player encounters that used this new action combat system. And it wasn't until 2012 that players finally got what they'd been waiting for with the release of Terror. For a Korean MMO coming to the West, Terra did fairly well upon release with the consensus from most reviews being that the combat was incredible, graphics were beautiful, but the levelling sucked and other than combat it didn't add anything new to the genre. Terra went free to play in 2013 bringing with it a massive influx of players, surpassing 1.4 million accounts, and it also had a big That's boost in 2015 big. when it came to Steam. Recently, however, on the 20th of April 2022, news broke that on the 30th of June, Terra will be shutting down permanently, receiving no more updates. In this video, we're going to enter the world of Terra for the final time, check out the game's end of life events, and pay our respects to an MMORPG that has undoubtedly had a massive impact on how MMO combat is designed. But first, I need to pay rent. MU Origin 3 is a brand new western fantasy MMO on mobile that's got all the features you'd want in an MMORPG, as well as a game from the long-standing MU series. Developed in Unreal Engine 4, MU Origin 3 gives you cutting-edge AAA graphics in the palm of your hand as you immerse yourself in the fantasy world of MU, embarking on an epic journey with challenges for fans of both PvP and PvE content. Unlike most mobile MMOs, MU Origin 3 actually has a large true open world, all completely explorable with stunning wings and free flight combat. This massive fantasy world spans a map size over 5 million square meters, featuring diverse biomes and even allows you to dive to the bottom of the ocean to explore the underwater city of Atlantis, a level of freedom never before seen in a mobile game. Sculpt a character that looks just like yourself with in-depth character customization, choose from one of three classes, the swordsman, archer or mage, partake in cross-server wars to lay claim to various cities, become a PvP god in 3v3 arenas and GVG, as well as take on massive world bosses with other players for a chance to drop legendary weapons, armor or wings. Click the link in the description below to play MU Origin 3 for free now, and use gift code MU3TLP as displayed on screen for epic rewards to help you on your adventure. Download now. Just logged into Terra for the final time, five different servers, the population is apparently high, something doesn't add up, hang on. No. A game wouldn't lie about its population, would it? Never. The last time I played the game, I played on this server. So let's check in on my character. You what? Where's my character? Well, rest in peace. I don't know what's happened to my characters, but they seem to have disappeared. F. New character it is. New character, male and female human, big ass titties immediately on display. Is she wearing plated underwear? Kaztanic, the edgy demon race, perfect for succubus erotic roleplay. Our roleplay. Aman, the Giga Chad race. High elves, basically humans with less testosterone. In my entire time playing Terra, I've only ever seen female elves. Nobody plays the male. Papori, Terra's one true furry race. Only one gender here, so I guess these panda bear humanoids either lay eggs or fuck themselves to reproduce. I'm not too sure. Ellen. FBI, 
Wait, wait, it's okay. If you read the law, this race is never aging. So actually, she's a 5,000 year old dragon. Yeah, I don't buy it either. Pick this race if you want to end up on some kind of watch list. Baraka, basically your average American. Female Kaztanic Slayer, let's go. Chastity belt at the ready, clothes cut perfectly to show off the metal shoved up her ass, and 25 starting presets of which only two or three aren't nightmare fuel. My character's looking pretty decent. Oh, what's this? Facial sliders? I didn't remember the character creation being this horrifying. Outfit. Preview her in a few different outfits. Each one of these look like they provide sufficient protection. We need to fix it. I, I can't play with a character like that. Toenail. No! F. Server didn't like my name. We go back. There it is. My level one slayer. Toenail. Perpetually walking towards me on loop. Let's jump in and grace the world of terror for the final time. Bloody hell, you can really see her ass when she's running around. It's like she's trying to stick it in your face. Hmm, where do I need to go? <coughs> nice kid. Let's do it together. Let's not. It's the most linear map you could possibly create. Yet they've still found it necessary to put in big giant yellow arrows on the floor. This tells me that there's some people who played this game and couldn't make it off the tutorial island. I'm concerned for this generation of gamers. Big George has popped out. This is definitely something Terra is always going to be remembered for, isn't it? It's big ass monsters. Perfect camera angle. One thing I always enjoyed about Terra's starting experience is that the combat feels fun really quickly. It's not one of those games where you're using two buttons for hours on end. New ability number three. Whirlwind, big damage. This is a pretty cool class. Her attacks are very slow. But they feel like big damage and they're very deliberate. Brilliant. Her new armor looks a little bit more protected. The tutorial ends with me defeating a big ass monster. Cutscene plays, skip. NPC dialogue, skip. Talk to Flightmaster and we're swept off on a unicorn to the city of Velika. I remember the first time I ever got on a Terra Pegasus and took a flight path. I was really blown away from the visuals and going through the portal, arriving at Velika for the first time. And there it is, the city of Velika. I was blown away the first time I played Terra and I saw that giant city in the distance. You're flying into it with the Pegasus. It was certainly a sight to behold back in the day when you saw this for the first time. Giant open plains, mountains in the distance. It definitely gave you a sense of wonder. I think looking back on this game, this is probably one of the scenes that I'll always remember from it. Playing it back now, it doesn't look as good because the graphics are outdated. I know it's a super instanced game. It's not really a true open world MMO, but I loved it back in the day. Ah, oh, there's another player here. A little bit of underboob. Get him out for the lads. Nice horse. Sometimes the horse in Terra doesn't have a turn animation, whereas other times it does. <laughs> weird horse. Now this plaza area is where all of the players used to hang out. I remember the first time I came here six years ago for my first ever first impressions video. Terra was the MMO that I covered first in that series. I need to stop saying the word first but I came to this plaza and I was absolutely fascinated. There were so many players running around lots of different weird and wonderful cosmetics. I felt like a world of Warcraft normie stepping into a room full of weebs. Six years later and I'm the last one to grace like this plaza. It's really sad. Now get out of here. Your headquarters will start to smell like pigling. What a dick. I'm the hero. I've just saved an island and I get called a pigling. Here it is. The first real zone you quest in out of the tutorial. Little bit nostalgic coming back here actually. As with pretty much every MMO starting area, it's a cozy little forest zone. Peaceful music playing in the background. What type of weirdo animated this woman? Who moves like that? Who jumps like that? When she lands, she looks like a frog. When she runs, she's hunched over like a goblin. I did some gathering, I killed some wolf rhinos, I pressed the F key. Introduction to RNG enhancing system, yes please. Hey, is that another player? Jack Norris, experiencing terror for the last time as well. Enjoy it, my dude. It's kind of crazy that graphically a lot of mobile games have caught up 
to the same level of graphical detail that Terra has. Ten years ago when this game first released, you'd never believe it if someone said, these graphics will be available in the palm of your hand in a few years time. But here we are. Not that the gameplay in mobile games is anywhere near as good as Terra, of course, but visuals have caught up, that's for sure. I continued questing through the forest zone, unlocking more abilities and combos. To this day, I still think Terra's combat system is up there with the best in the genre, despite being 10 years old. Combat in this game does just fucking feel so good, even after all of these years. It just feels so nice how your attacks kind of combo together, and you can use other abilities to instantly animation cancel something else. It's still up there as some of the best action combat. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, it's not the best, but it's up there. It's just a testament to what a good job they did making the combat in this game. I dinged level 20, and it was finally time for me to experience one of Terra's biggest pieces of content. The cash shop. Vanity. Underwear. Invisible armor. So you can fully show your underwear. <laughs> this game knows its target audience, doesn't it? Slide into invisible armor so everyone can still admire your beautiful underwear. That's unbelievable. No shame. Reveal the secrets of your underwear and show what you're wearing underneath. Oh my god. We'll buy one of those. It's RNG, is it? No. No way it's RNG. It cost me like $20. <laughs> I got a little bit unlucky. This one covers up a lot. Rip money. You can't even select the underwear. I don't believe it. Why is underwear RNG? Not only that, but it's stat boosting underwear as well. Only Terra could make underwear pay to win. I guess this is me. Now. We are pulling a lot of mobs. Big damage. It's oh, always fun. I didn't realize this at the time, but I had some buff that reduced all my cooldowns by 80%. This allowed me to infinite combo. What the fuck? I can just combo this over and over again. I can just spam spacebar and I'm just going around cutting things up. <laughs> what the hell? I'm playing one-handed. We returns to Velika. My character rocks up to her promotion ceremony in underwear, as you do. Yeah, I look like a real you soldier of valor, don't I? Go forth, soldier, and bring us victory for Valkyon. Check. And at this point, I discovered the costume shop, a preview mode that allows you to mix and match every cosmetic in the game, take screenshots, and enjoy the ultimate waifu dress-up sim. This is where people spent the most time playing Terra, wasn't it? In the dressing room. You can have a carrot sword, no way. <laughs> what? You can have a swordfish as your sword? This is where Terra made its money, the crazy cosmetics. I think this was one of the things that I'll always remember about the game from the first time I played it. I remember logging in and seeing some really weird mounts characters driving around in like little police cars and stuff and everything was just so out there when it came to the cosmetics and fashion. I think I've just scrolled through about a hundred different great sword skins. I would have loved to have seen a Terra transmog competition. I feel like there'd been a lot of potential with that. In conclusion, Terra isn't a real MMO. It's a glorified waifu dress-up simulator. Yo, big giant wings, butterfly, dude, underwear. This is where the real action goes. To what extent can you make your character look like a porn star? Quite a lot, I'd say. Yeah, she's definitely got an OnlyFans. If you think about it, a lot of these costumes are pretty creepy, as I'm sure all of this can be equipped by the lolly character. If she's showing any less, she's naked. <laughs> It's like a snowboarding outfit. The real reason Terra's shutting down is they just simply ran out of cosmetic ideas. They've made every single possible cosmetic imaginable and the art team were just done. It's like, okay, we've done everything. Shut it down. Check out some of the mounts. Crazy. A pig. <laughs> An ostrich. Oh my God, there's so many mounts. What is that? Yeah, this is what I saw when I first ever logged into the game and I was like, wow, what? You can have little cars as mounts. This is a mount, a bloody chair. A fat dog laying on a skateboard, butthole on full display. The art team of Terra had a lot of fun, didn't they? I put out a YouTube community post asking people what they'll remember about Terra and the impact it had on the MMO genre. Here are some comments. The action combat system was super engaging when it came out, remember coming from WoW and being blown away by it, though the honeymoon phase was short-lived. 
It was the first MMORPG I ever played when I got my first PC that could load games without crashing. Terra is really nostalgic for me and I'm sad to see it go. It's like saying goodbye to that time period of my life. For me personally, I'll always remember Terra as the MMO that kickstarted my first impressions videos after I branched out from covering World of Warcraft over 6 years ago. It was the first MMO that I did a Journey to Max Level series for, please don't watch it, my old content is unbearably cringe, and I'll always remember it as a colourful, extremely high fantasy game that didn't take itself too seriously, had a fantastic combat system, and contained more weebs than Anime Expo. Things I liked about Terra, combat, crazy outfits, pets and mounts, sky castles, fun PvP, big ass monsters. Things I disliked, Game Forge, Mind Numbing Questing, RNG Gear Endgame, Pay to Win, Gender Locked Classes, Ellen, and bad optimization due to Unreal Engine 3. Quick look at Terra's final Steam reviews, mostly positive. Plenty of people got hundreds, even thousands of hours of enjoyment out of this game. Overall, Terra is the MMO that really kickstarted the obsession with action combat that a big portion of the MMO community have to this day. Ultimately though, the game couldn't compete with newer, visually superior action combat MMOs such as Black Desert Online, but it made it to the 10 year mark before shutting down, which is fairly respectable. Who knows, maybe one day we'll get Terra 2. There's actually been a few rumours on this, and personally, I'd love to see it, if it's not another goddamn mobile game, that is. Did you guys not have phones? And for those of you that really can't let go of Terra when June 30th hits, I do have a bit of copium for you in that the game will still be playable on fairly popular private servers. The two big ones I'm seeing recommended is Menmar's Terra, which is an older version of the game before unpopular changes were made, and Azura, which which is similar to the official servers at the time of closing. Let me know about your favourite memories with Terra in the comments below, and would you like to see a modern sequel of the game be released someday? Social media links on screen, help me satisfy those algorithm gods with a like or comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh Terra. You glorious bastard, I'll miss you. For all the wrong reasons. But you will be missed.